All right, next up in the multiplication bundle, we're going to take a look at a worksheet generator that I created using a spreadsheet. Um, so if you, just keep in mind, if you click on this first link, it's going to take you to an elementary spreadsheet. If you click on all, it's going to take you to a much more robust spreadsheet um, that includes middle school and high school material. All right, so we're just going to use the elementary one for now. So you've narrowed down the facts that uh, kids need to practice, let's suppose. All right, and in this spreadsheet, you'll see this. there's a directions tab, but I'm going to stick to the values tab. So you've worked with students and you realize, hey, you know, you really need to just practice your threes and fours uh, for multiplication. I'm going to scroll down here and every one of these boxes will create a separate worksheet, uh, kind of hopefully to fit your needs. But I'm going to stay over here to this multiplying specific facts. And I'm going to say, you know what, you need to work on your threes and fours. And we're only going to stick with multiplying those numbers between zero and six for right now. So what this will do is this will generate a worksheet with these parameters, all right? So you can scroll along the bottom here to get to this specific worksheet, or just click on the lines over here and you can scroll down. You'll find multiply specific facts in this list. And this process that we're gonna do here is very similar to, here we go, uh, the sprints that they use in Eureka. Uh, so what you would do is, and you can see that the, all these problems fit those parameters that we selected. Uh, print this off. So just make sure when you go to print that you do select portrait and it should fit on one page. All right. Now when you print this off, print it off double-sided and so you have the same problems on the front and the same problems on the back. The idea here is that if kids struggle um, with a problem, say four times five, when they do the problems on the back, they're going to see that same problem again and they're going to get an extra, an, an extra attempt at it. All right. Uh, the way you do this in the class, though, you give kids one minute to work left to right, top to bottom, uh, and see how many problems they can do. No skipping and no cherry picking. All right. Uh, you count up how many they got right in that one minute. And now usually after that, give them another like 10 seconds to do a couple additional problems. Take a little break, flip the paper over, and do the same exact problems on the back for one minute. Over time, what we would hope to see is growth. So on the first side, if they only got five right the first time, a month later, maybe they got six right or seven right, right? But in that immediate instance, what we would hope to see is growth from the front to the back. So if they only got five right on the front, hopefully on the back, they got seven right. And that's the focus is the growth, right? Don't say, hey, you need to get 30 right in a minute, all right? We're going to stick with the growth model. Um, and that's how we'll, one way we'll start to build fluency with students.